So the minute I had it on, I was trying to find excuses to do all this stuff. And they were like, no, no, he doesn't, he doesn't do that. that that's silly. <laughs> the way it works, at least with these kind of projects, they send you a scene, but they don't tell you what it's from. So then what happens is you send that in, uh, they take a look, and then it's revealed to you, oh, what it's going to be is a, it's going to be a, a Game of Thrones spin-off. And then the next stage is I met Ryan and Miguel, who was, were joint showrunners at the time. I met them on Zoom and we had a conversation and then they wanted to meet in person. I'd done a series of films for television about uh, black Afro-Caribbean experience in London and I'd been in one of those. They had seen it and were impressed, thankfully. Oh, yeah, jungle patrol. It's calm self down, sunshine. It's routine stop and search. There's been a few B and I don't care if there's been a murder. He's a school child in uniform. But so we talked a lot about fathers because I play the father of a, a man who joins the police force. And that for them and for me was the key to Corliss. Despite the fact that he's a, a wonderful explorer and a sail and a seaman and a warrior and all those things, at heart, he is a father, he's a family man. And he wants to secure the legacy of his family name. What is this brief mortal life? If not the pursuit of legacy. And so that was the key, really, to think of him like that rather than the other stuff, rather than the, the, the battles and so forth. Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. I can't remember exactly what my, my agent said. She rang and I think she said something like, darling, it's you. Something like that. And everything else went, it, it went into the ether because I was like, ah, oh my God. And then there's that terrible thing that a lot of actors have. I've spoken to so many of us. The best moment ever is that split second when you get the phone call. Because the minute you put the phone down, you then go, oh my goodness, I've got to do it. Oh gosh, oh But uh, yeah, I do remember I was in my kitchen when I got that call. Initially, I think the look was always going to be dreadlocks, so that wasn't part of me. So they had shown me, they had a sketch with my face with these long locks, and I was like, that's going to look pretty cool. It's been a long time since I've had hair of my own. So yeah, that's been, that was always a dream. So the minute I had it on, I was trying to find excuses to do all this stuff. And they were like, no, no, he doesn't, he doesn't do that. that. That's silly. And then they dropped the bombshell and they said, um, actually, we think he should have a beard. And I went, no, no, he shouldn't. And they said, no, no, we think he should have a beard. Now, and so I resisted. And they said, no, no, he's going to have to have a beard. And I was like, ah, oh, crumbs. Because I'm not a big fan of the beard. But the, the look and the, the, most of it came from them. We shot a, a battle scene in, in season one. And there was a long toing and froing between myself and the powers that be. Because I kept saying, look, I don't think he should wear a helmet. Now, to be honest, I didn't have a legitimate reason for him not to wear it. I just thought it would look good with the hair swinging and, you know, swinging the axe and stuff like that. And this went on for weeks. As I was going through the choreography, I kept saying, uh, look, look, I don't think he'll wear a helmet. I think he's just like a really cool guy. And it'll just make a really good silhouette. Him standing there swinging with the hair flying. And you can do it in slow motion if you like. And then eventually the word came back saying, you're wearing a helmet. And I was like, oh, rats. So they were right. Historically, it makes sense. But yeah, that was my one time when I really wanted to do a bit of hair swinging. It always sounds a bit weird when you say this to people who aren't, who aren't actors, but the, the costume makes you. You know, clothes do that. It's like if you look back in history, not that long, maybe 30, 40 years ago, when men wore suits more often, there was a formality because the suit just makes you do that and so there was something about wearing that stuff and one of the things they said to me was look when we meet him he's the richest man in the land so his uni his costumes will portray that you wear this stuff and you suddenly you have a straight back there's these wonderful boots that they've made and it means that you when i walk i tend to sort of almost like pitter patter when he walks he strides i mean he, he stands and he he's used to being listened to so he'll stand and he'll wait until he's got the attention of the room and then when he speaks they listen a lot of that comes from what he's wearing it's admired what he's wearing it's expensive what he's wearing it's more expensive than what you're wearing somebody asked me the other day when he's in the small council how does he feel about everybody else and i said he thinks i'm better than all of you because i've been out there and i've done it and you haven't and a lot of that comes from their costume it's, they do a great job with those So I met her uh, maybe the first day, second day of rehearsal. And I knew who she was. I'd seen her work before and I, I, I admired her. But yeah, she walked in and we sort of went, hi, I'm going to be your husband. She's, I'm going to be your wife. And then I think she remembers it slightly different to me. But there was a moment during that first morning, we were both at the table getting snacks or something and we spontaneously hugged each other. I think I may have said to her, I'm a hugger. She said, oh, so am I. And we hugged each other and it was just magic from then on. I have an occasion found that to be 
quite enjoyable. Corliss is completely relaxed and himself in two places. He's either at sea and he's completely who he is, or he's in the arms of his wife. The particular scenes when he's just with his wife, I think there is a sense of playfulness in him that you don't see when he's in the small council or with everybody else. I've had men whipped for falling asleep on their watch. You are no man. And I think they followed my lead on that because I think the relationship that Eve and I created, that we have just generally as friends and colleagues, I think that seeps into the show. Well, the first scene that we shot, actually, was the scene in the aftermath of our daughter's death. And we're by the fireplace, and I say the line about history remembers names, not blood. History does not remember blood. It remembers names. That was the first scene that we shot. But the scene that we shot that basically, I think, encapsulated our relationship was the scene when King Viserys comes to us and asks, will your son marry my daughter? And then when he leaves, we have this discussion and she thinks I've pushed him too far. But there's a playfulness to Corliss and still the steel, because I think she says, you know our son's gay. And he sort of just goes, ah, he'll grow out of it. He will outgrow it. There is no pleasure in the world like bedding a woman. We are placing our son in danger. And then there was a scene that we did in season two where she comes to me with a picnic, where there were moments when, I, as we discussed it, we were like, oh, this is what they were like when they first were together all those years ago. So anyway, I think there's a, a kind of softness and a playfulness, I think, that I've hopefully brought to him. If it looks good, it's really down to the stunt guys. Because what happens is for about three or four weeks, or once or twice a week, I would meet the stunt guys and they, what they did is they, they show you uh, on a small bit of footage of the choreography of the fight. So there's a guy playing me and the guy's coming at him in a line and they show you the moves. So then for these three weeks, you practice those moves and all the stuntmen are in a line, they come towards you and you swing at one and you take one's ankles out and then you and so on. And you're like, this is gonna look great and I'm gonna look sexy. And then what happens on the day, of course, they don't come at you with one in a line, they're just all around you. So what started out as me looking smooth and going, yeah, yeah, ends up with me going, no, stop it, stop, and swinging. And so, and so at the end of this, I think we took a, the best part of a week, I think, to shoot that. I kept saying to our director, Greg Yatanis, I was like, is there anything good in there? Because I feel like all I'm doing is closing my eyes and spitting and going, stop it, stop it. And he says, no, no, it'll be fine, be fine. And it's because the stunt guys are so good that even my pathetic flailing, they make look <laughs> like, like I know what I'm doing. Initially, there's a sense of trepidation because, as you said, Game of Thrones was huge and there wasn't universal um, desire to see us because one of the things that happened was when it was announced some people a, a huge amount of the fan base were not happy with the way Game of Thrones had ended and so there were a lot of people sort of just going don't make something else go back and do that again and so there was that stuff and then and then of course all of your friends and family like oh my goodness Game of Thrones that was huge wow are you sure so all of us the cast we were lucky that we were all together for the first few um, episodes we all had the same trepidation i think maybe paddy i think paddy was pretty convinced it was going to be a success but most of us were kind of like well i don't know i'm just a bit, a bit concerned but you immediately throw that away because you can't act that you can't play that you just play the job that's in front of you and then all of the other stuff is not up to me to elude a storm you can either sail into it or around it but you must never await its coming hope that the directors and all those people know what they're doing and then that we come out there and then the fans like it. I have a, a, a social media presence and so sometimes I will look at stuff and it's nice and it's great because one of the things that you hear of course is some people sort of go well I was dubious about this whole show but you guys have done so well and I'm so pleased I'm now a fan. Who doesn't want to have people telling you you've done a, a job well done and it's been great everywhere that we've been there's been so much love and so much support for the show and for, for us and lots of people saying that they love uh, what myself and Eve have created so that's wonderful I mean despite the fact that there are some revelations in this season about other things that Corliss did. So people are disappointed by that. But no, it, it's, it's wonderful. I'm, I'm so, I feel blessed. I feel privileged to be in this position. It is terrible, but I live in this world. This is the world that I've lived in. So it's not, I'm amazed sometimes by people who are surprised by it, but, I, but then they've not lived my life. So why would they be? Unlike every other Lord of the realm, I can say that I built my house's high seat with the strength of mine own back. 
There is an interesting story that I heard. I don't know if it's true, but it's an anecdote I heard about the making of. Do you know the Tarantino movie Django? So they're making this movie, and Leonardo DiCaprio is very upset because he's having to use the M word quite a lot. And Sam Jackson says to him, "Jesus, pull yourself together. For you, it's a hard thing. For me, it's Tuesday." And I was like, "Yeah, that's it." So this stuff came. It was. Don't get me wrong. It was a surprise when it came, and the and the in the waves that it came in. I, I was like, "Oh wow!" I didn't think it was still that important to people that the this. Race thing, because most of us live our lives not really worrying about it. But then you settle and you go, well, it's that's I, I, that's a part of my life. It's just always has been. When I was a kid, when I was about, I remember this. I was about fourteen, and I can't think, I can't think what the incident was that brought this thought on. But I was in my bedroom Sunday night. I remember that, and I thought to myself, by the time I reach the age of about thirty-five to forty, this racism will be gone. It'll be gone because all the people that I know who are my age at the time. Don't think like that. So it'll be gone. All these races will be dead. Well, here I am, in my late fifties, and it's still here. This is an absurdity. And so I'm kind of like resigned to the fact that that's just what it is, and I have to just ignore that and get on with my life. Just like if I guess, and I wouldn't presume to speak for the ladies in the room, but I presume if you're a lady, you think to yourself, there is sexism, but I have to get on. If you happen to be gay, there is homophobia, but I have to get on. You can't sit back and just go, "Oh, this is、uh, it's killing me." It's it's those people win, those bigots win. So I've been around for a while, and I've had a few things where people have said to me, "This will be a life changing or career changing," and they have been in the sense of, "Yes, prior to doing this, I hadn't done it, and now I have done it, so it changed my life in that way." But I have remained dubious about this idea of it being so transformative because for me, I'm an actor. And I often say to people around me, you know, for however many seasons I'm lucky enough to be in this thing, for however many seasons we do, that's great. And then once it's done, I'll be the guy that was in that thing, and I have to move on to something else. I can't then, for the rest of my career, so just go. I know you've never heard of me, but I used to be in this thing one time. So I, my attitude is, I'm going to enjoy this. It's fun. I get to meet all these, all you wonderful people. I get to travel around the world, and it's nice that where I, most places I go, people who know my face and they're like, "Oh my God, I love the work you do." That's great. But beyond that, the life-changing thing, I have no idea. Our worth is not given. It must be 